what's up? I'm Jeremy Shoemaker, and I'm here with Thor Schrock, who was uh, one of the three finalists on the Internet Millionaire. So we're just going to talk about the Internet Millionaire. So who is your favorite guru out of all? Wow, I'd have to say, I mean, it, it's tough because they were all so good. Um, you know, I really I learned a lot. Dave Taylor was awesome. I mean, he, he has the same, the same stint that he, he gives every time, but I'd never heard it before, so it was fresh for me. And, uh, boy, it was just, just stuff that you kind of instinctively knew about blogging, but when you put it all together, it came together and it was, it was whole. And you could, you could grab it and hang on to it and say, that's how you're supposed to do it. And it's changed the entire way that I blog. It really has. Um, uh, Marlon Sanders, oh, my gosh, that guy, if you could take some of that energy and stick it in a bottle, that could be his next info product. I mean, it's, <laughs> he's just he's a ball of energy. Uh, for those of you out there watching, he's the, uh, the ninja guy. You will be ninja. Uh, so he was awesome, but I mean, they were all great. There wasn't a single day where I was sitting there like, why do I have to listen to this guy? You know, I mean, right. there, there wasn't a single day of that. Um, it was all new for me. It was all fresh. I'd never been, I've never been to an internet uh, marketing conference or seminar or anything before, so this was all really new to me. Yeah, and so I think the, the guy who impressed me the most, maybe it's just the freshest, but I really like Perry Marshall and what, what he had to do. I think, um, I mean, he's a guy, I think he reminded me a lot of me where he just, just was like, all right, let's cut through the bullshit and just yeah. say, this is what it is. And when he, when he said, he showed a cover of a magazine with that a girl. That was great. You should have seen Jamie's the, face. That was great. Yeah. And she said, it's, <laughs> it's boobs or, I forgot what she said, but she started to say something. He said, it's a big set of tits is what it is. And we all just kind of smiled and laughed and, and it was like, oh. Yeah. Gosh. It was just about appealing to primal instincts, no matter how you slice it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, everybody wants to shoot, but, but really marketing boils down to appealing to yes. people's basic needs. Well, and well, that, yeah, their basic needs, I mean, for survival, for shelter, uh, for sex, I mean, all those needs, um, if, you can, if you can find, it doesn't have to come right out and say big boobs, like those magazine covers, they don't come out and say, look at the big boobs. They come out and say, okay, here's a beautiful woman, and over on the side, you look at where the headlines are placed, and you can see that they're placed just parallel to where your eyes would, would go. For example, one of the episodes, uh, we were doing the tickets at the fair. I think that was the episode yeah, I got eliminated. Yeah. And uh, at the, I'm like, you know, there's a gal in the ticket booth there, and boy, I wish that I could get her to give away my tickets for me. It'd be awesome. Um, but, you know, gee, what do I have that she wants? And I thought, well, maybe if she had the impression she was supposed to have the tickets, and she just didn't get them for some reason, maybe she would just give them away. And she did. Which is classic act as if. So yeah. you act as, as yeah. if you were a part of the... And a lot of, I mean, let me tell you, Jeremy, episode 10, if you, if people watching out there, if there's a single episode that you have to watch, you got to watch episode 10 and then go read the blog post, read Jason Marshall's blog, read uh, episode uh, yeah, episode 10, episode 11, read Jason Marshall's blog, uh, jasonstanleymarshall.com, read my blog, uh, and read the Next Internet Millionaire blog and forum because... Um, I was pretty much ranked right up there with the Antichrist. I was I was crucified, literally. Who is the who is the whiny pants who is ragging on you about uh oh it's whiny not truthful, pants. whoever the hell that guy was. Oh the The guy who quit and said he couldn't work with Joel right. that, that was Jason Marshall. And see I thought you know, that Jason, was low. you know Was that I, a lot of editing or No no that that was that was intense in that room at that point and uh um, one of the things that I had learned in the, in the meantime was that the judges were actually lim leaning toward eliminating me that round. Yeah, and, I got that feeling. And uh, and when he had that outburst, what was edited out was when Joel said, "I have a I, you know I have a real problem with you questioning my integrity." That was edited out. Um, but uh, and then you know it was defensive. So when you see you could see Jason's posture and then the editing change where he was you know I'm not doing this. Boom, I'm out. Um, and then when. Uh, then when you saw him next, he was kind of sitting back in his chair and, and more kind of you know resigned a little bit uh, because you know Joel was like you know you're you're telling me that I'm I'm pairing with Thor and Thor's so unethical and so I'm unethical I don't appreciate that that's a paraphrase it wasn't the exact words but yeah the uh, the bottom line was episode ten set the stage for episode eleven for me I mean really going into that room with Trippy that that Charles told me when we walked out of that room he said that was a coin flip Thor he goes that was the only time I've ever been nervous I thought I thought I was going home. And, I, and, you know, we, we were rooming at the time. A lot of people don't realize that we were all in our separate rooms and segregated. I mean, that episode 10, after we, Jason and I had that wonderful day together, um, I, had, I slept 10 feet from the guy. <laughs> I mean, they, they edited out the part when Jason came after me literally swinging a Bible. He um, literally had a Bible in his hand and was swinging it at me. They edited that out. I mean, it's, you know, Jason's not a bad guy. And a lot of people, it's like, it seems like in the blogs and the forums, everything is either Thor is evil and Jason is, is almighty or... Jason's whiny pants and Thor's cool. Well, you know, 
neither one is true. You know, looking back on it, it was like the e-commerce chips, nobody knew what they were for. And so what everyone said I was deceitful about was I told everybody I had two chips when I had four. And, you know, if I'm going into a business meeting or a negotiation or if I help you out with a project and I go out and, and talk to somebody on your behalf and they say, so what's Jeremy willing to do on this? Am I supposed to tell them what you're, yeah. what you're willing to do? Or am I supposed to tell them what you told me to tell them or what, what I feel will advance our, our paired goals? And so, you know, I don't think that's deceit. I really don't. I think that's business. Um, and, you know, just like you wouldn't go in and open up your checkbook and say, look at my assets and liabilities, now let's make a deal. Um, that's not what I was going to do in that competition. Now, a lot of people thought it was deceitful. I didn't. I defended it. I still defend it. But uh, it's kind of telling when episode 10 came out. You can look. That was the single most commented on episode of the entire series. Right. Uh, episode 10, at this point, well, I believe, had 22 comments on the blog yeah. compared to like 1 to 6 and all the others. And then I put my farewell post up when I got eliminated, and I had one comment on it. And the one comment is, boy, it's funny how people get quiet when you defend yourself. Because you see, we're on a non-disclosure. Up to this point, I couldn't talk. And this is even a special exemption. Yeah. There was a, one episode where they had to give away uh, movie tickets to Over the Hedge uh, at a fairgrounds. And it was this was the must-see episode 11 or 10. Uh, this is 11. Yeah, this is 11. the one I was eliminated on. Yeah. And this was, and I think the whiny pants guy, Jason, whatever his name is, was was the guy who was like, oh, you you giving away a trip, you can't do that, that's unethical. Well, okay, here, that was there, there's some background, that was... well, that's toward Nico, but there's some background about this whole thing you don't know. Okay. There was, okay, this goes way back, you remember the episode we were selling popsicles at the, at yeah, the marathon, yeah, yeah, yeah. that we didn't have permission to sell popsicles at to runners who didn't have wallets? That was a great challenge. Thanks for that one, Eric. <laughs> but no, so Nico did well, though, he found people with all kinds of money, but... Uh, one of the things I did is I was there, if I won this whole thing, I was giving the money to charities around town. Right. Um, one of the charities was the Lincoln Crisis Pregnancy Center. And so I turned around and wrote on the front of my box, I said, Crisis Pregnancy Center Fundraiser. Trying to, you know, give myself some kind of a strategy or an advantage so I could sell the, sell the popsicles. And uh, Joel ripped the page off the front of my thing and said, you don't listen very well, Thor. We said this is not a fundraiser. And it was stern, like that. And so, you know, I said, okay, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to learn from Joel. I'm trying to find out what he expects from us. Obviously, he expects me to listen very closely to what he says. And so afterwards, I approached Eric and said, you know, Eric, I was going to match that out of my own pocket. It wasn't like I was going to, you know, take the money that Joel had other plans for or something. I figured, you know, it's 24 popsicles. How much money are you really going to raise? 60 bucks? And Nico raised 80? Say 100 bucks? I mean, okay, I'll match it. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, right. I know there's some people out there, $100 is different for every person, but that was Eric's point. He goes, it was like you're taking out your wallet and you're buying a win, is what he, what he said. And I said, okay, you know, I can see that. That I could see how that might be, you know, maybe you know, Jamie, I wasn't in this, Jamie I was... works for the Canadian government, so you know, maybe she doesn't have the ability to pull out her wallet with a hundred bucks and buy a win. Yeah. Jeremy pull out his friggin' Hummer and. Well, no, I mean, I mean, if I would, I just kept thinking like, God, I would do this and this and this. I mean, I, I'm a gamer. I mean, like in a competition, yeah. I, I will win. I mean, just because I'm competitive. All right I mean, now, so take that, take that aspect now into episode eleven. We are not supposed to pull out our wallets and buy a win. Mm -hmm. And what did Nico do for Jamie? He pulled out his wallet, gave a seven hundred dollar Costa Rican vacation away, and then went around. And so that's what happened. Yes, okay. that's how Jamie won. It was it was Nico all the way. Nico won that challenge for Jamie. And so if uh, so, what happened was Nico came out and said, "Okay, um, Eric." I wonder we, where that Costa Rica thing came well, out. Of. If, if you hear the words Costa Rica and the next hundred million, it comes from Nico. I mean, that's Nico was like Costa Rica twenty four seven. You got to give guy credit. He's passionate. That's what he does, and he he sells his stuff well. But. Uh, <laughs> no, so what happened was Nico came out and said, okay, here's a, I want to give away this three-day, two-night, whatever, Costa Rican getaway. And Eric said, okay, that's fine, but it's going to be in the drawing, so no matter whose ticket gets drawn, they can qualify for it. Well, the trouble was, nobody told the other teams. And even when people like Jason Marshall called Joel, called Joel Com and said, Joel, they're giving away a trip. The whiny pants guy. Yeah. <laughs> the little narc. Nico's giving away a trip. What are we going to do about this? And Joel told him, I know Nico's giving away a trip. Now, based on everything that we'd seen up to that point, Joel saw me doing the crisis pregnancy center thing, and you know he saw how I got treated, so everybody kind of figured that this would come back to bite them in the judgment room. Mm -hmm. Nico, you could do that. You cheated. You, know, you shouldn't have done that. You know That was unfair. It was unethical. But there was one phrase in the teaching that day, which if you get the DVD set, by the way, uh, buy it from me if you would. I, I could use the commission at this point. You know, <laughs> no, no, I'm just giving you a hard time. If you do buy the DVD set, I would encourage it though. But if you buy the DVD set, the, uh, there's one line in the teaching from that day that said you need to widgetize your product. You need to take something that's standard. And I'll use an example. Uh, a guy I know, Gary Kahn, had a post on his blog, or he has a, a website or something that does YouTube skins. So it's taking something old, a YouTube site, 
and then taking a skin that you can put on your YouTube site to give it a unique look, but then he has all these stock skins. And so it's widgetizing those YouTube skins, making something new out of something old. Well, what they said Nico did was he took something old, the, the ticket was a $100 drawing, and widgetized it into a $700 Costa Rican vacation.